Okay, guys, I hope this is the last part. So we have 23 to go up to, so 21, 22, and 23. So first of all, when it says graph this and describe the end behavior, you're just going through and you're taking that and you're putting it in the graphing scratch pad. Okay, so when I go to graph this um, and I put it in, the only one that it's going to match up here is C. Now, the only thing I would caution you about is that it does ask about this end behavior, so just remember what that means. At this end up here, as X is going to a positive infinity, so is Y. So that end is going up. So that's the bigger end. Smaller end down here, X is going to negative infinity, and so is Y. So that means it's going down. Now, when they look at end behavior, they look at the lower end first and then the, and then what it does when it gets to the positive end. So that's why it's down and up. Okay, now that's a little different, but use your graphing scratch pad. That'll help a lot. Okay, now I think 22 is another one that I kind of saw people struggle with. So I want to give you a little bit of an easier way to do this one too. So we've been doing this over the last couple days when we have factored... We have taken and used menu 331 on this. Now, the only thing that I would caution you against is when you do this, the standard form for this is going to be 6x to the third minus 60x squared plus 144x, and then it's going to have to have plus zero on the end because there's no number value. So if you go ahead and put that in your calculator, you're going to end up with x equals 0, x equals 4, oops, and x equals 6. Now remember, when that comes up, it's going to be 0, 4, and 6 in that uh, set that you get, and you have to know to be able to write this. So that's kind of the first part. Then I want to take apart what we have been doing together in class. So if I know that these are what my factors are, I'm going to make them all equal zero. So I can't do anything with that one because it equals zero. Remember, if it's positive four, I'm going to make it minus four. And if it's positive six, I'm going to make it minus six. Now I need to take these three pieces and write them together. So x, oops, might help if it looked like an x x minus 4, and x minus 6. Now, our only problem with this is that if I go down here and look at the ones that have the examples that have x minus 4 and x minus 6 in them, this one doesn't work. This one doesn't work. And that one doesn't work. So this is the only one that's left. Um, I want you to notice there's a 6 in the outside. And here's the only drag to what we've been doing as far as making it easier, is that I can't put just that 6 in the outside. Now, they did do that as a 6, and that's fine. But you can't pull that out when you're going to do the factored form using menu 331 because that only pulls out variables, and 6 isn't a variable. So that's kind of where that part's at. Okay, now I want to look at just this last one. It wants to know the relative max and min. So here's what you're going to start with. First of all, you're going to take this part right here, and you're going to take that and put it in your graphing scratch pad. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. So once I do my graphing scratch pad, and you're going to have one that's going to be about the size of the exam, you are going to have to go through and kind of take your window and adjust it. So I'm going to have to take my window and go from negative 10 to 10 for my x's and negative 80 to 80 for my y's. And if I do that, that's really going to help me here. Okay, so if I go through to graph, let me see if I can put it on mine real quick. See if I can take a picture and see if it works. So I have, let's see, x raised to the third 
plus 3x squared minus 24x. And when we look at this graph, if you don't remember this, to set reset your window, you're going to have to do menu 4, 1. And then I'm just going to have to make sure my x's are negative 10 to 10. And then my y's are going to be negative 80 to 80. Okay, let me see if I can take a picture of this so that you can see the graph. So if I take this graph, let's see if I can grab my... Here's what my graph looks like. I've never done this. Let's see if it works. I'm going to try to insert that photo. Okay, it's being difficult. Let's try it this way. Copy. Okay, I guess I'll try it one more time. Okay, so when I have this, and they want me to kind of look at a couple different pieces about it. They want us to look at the relative min. That's going to happen right there. And they want me to look at the relative max, which is going to be up here. Now, to be able to do the relative min, you have to use menu 6-2. And do the relative max, you're going to have to use menu 6-3. And if I do that, my relative min is going to be 2, negative 28. And my relative max is going to be negative 4 and 80. Okay, that means on 23, my answer is going to be B.